Okay, we are live on Facebook, hey everyone, and we are live on Instagram. Welcome to this week's live session every Tuesday at 3, and um, today we are uh, from the Cape. You'll hear my voice, I'm a bit sick, but nothing to worry about. I am live today, and we can talk about some questions and um, give some answers to some business questions, financial questions, everything you want to know and that you want to ask. Uh, the Millionaire 22 and we'll talk about that guys so great being here with you again today we've seen um, a growth in the in the in the viewers that tune in for our live session every week and it's great to talk about topics that you guys want to know about and that you guys find interesting um, to ask about so today we're from the Cape we're in Klein Block uh, so been to the beach this morning I uh, had a great uh, um, time on the beach, uh, did a bit of reading and um, you know just enjoying it. So yes, we've dropped our feed on, on Instagram, so I'm going to finish on, on uh, Facebook and then we'll take it from there. So yeah guys, a topic that we're talking about this week is um, what entrepreneurs should do this time of year. Okay, what should you do this time of year? So it's the end of the year and your business is kind of slowing down. What should you do? And one of the import, most important things you should do is to actually step away from your business and look at your business from an outside perspective. So throughout the year, you're in your business. You're working on emails. You're working on seeing clients. You're working on managing people. You're working on, you know, in your business the whole time, being busy and being part of the hustle and the bustle. And now this time of year, it's important to step back a bit and to look at your business from an outside perspective to look at where you are and where you want to go and what's happening uh, what strategy are you following and um, you know where are you in terms of your goal in terms of where you want to be and then you can take an outside perspective on things and see what to do and how to tackle problems that might be um, arising that you can't see from within your business but that you only can see from without your business so take a step back look at your business from an outside perspective and see your business from an outside perspective because sometimes you can make more objective decisions in that case so one of the things you can do is um, to look at your business from an outside perspective is to read okay <laughs> get a nice, get a nice book um, crash on the beach and read a bit and um, improve your financial knowledge and your financial experience by reading and uh, in that case you bring a lot of new techniques a lot of new wisdom and a lot of new knowledge to your company when you start again and when you walk in the door next year so it's very important to read and then also spend some time on uh, strategy development why are you doing what you're doing? What can you improve? What have you learned throughout the year? And how can you implement new things to kind of improve what you've done this year? So read, work on strategy, and then the final thing is um, follow some other entrepreneurs. <laughs> so it's a great time to look at YouTube videos and Instagram videos and read some blogs and stuff from your favorite entrepreneurs to see what they are doing and to learn a bit from them. So guys, if you're on the beach this holiday, go get the How to Become a Millionaire 22 and read it. It's going to be great for you. And um, go through all of the other content. So guys, super important. So what do entrepreneurs or business people or people of a side hustle do this time of year? You look at your business from an outside perspective and you gain knowledge and experience. So how you can do that by, by reading working on your business strategy and then looking at other entrepreneurs and see what they are doing so that when you walk into your business next year in January, you have the motivation, the passion, the drive, as well as the knowledge and the experience to tackle the problems that you're going to face in 2018. And all you have to do is to implement and take action. <laughs> cool guys. Um, don't focus on New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions normally is 
something big that you want to tackle and then most people jump in January and they just try to do this massive task and then they fail after the first week or two or month. Don't do that. Rather work on a strategy to implement something in your life that you can sustain. Because sustainment is key. You need to be able to sustain that throughout the whole year. So rather than saying, look, I want to look like a bodybuilder when I start 1 January. I want to just jump in the gym, two hour sessions and become a bodybuilder within the first three months. Rather than saying that, rather say, look, I know my schedule is quite tough with my business and my things that I'm doing. I think I can, I can allocate half an hour a day um, to, to my body, to fitness. So then I'll start gymming half an hour a day. Um, to, to improve that and, and with that you gradually get uh, fit to be able to do that and then you can increase that hours. A lot of people say look I'm going to start a new business in 2018 and then they jump in 12 hour you know, days, 14, 16 hour days and they're not fit enough and then they burn out after the first three months. For example in my case I've been working 16, 14 hours a day for a long time. So when I need to work a 16 hour day in my business, it's easy because I'm already fit to do so. A new entrepreneur jumping in, coming from a nine to five or, or you know, coming from a six hour day job um, is going to struggle to keep the tempo and work 14, 16 hours a day. So rather start small with your New Year's resolution or rather strategy and work it into your year in, instead of having this massive New Year's resolution and just jumping in it. We have a question on Facebook. Okay, so it's Francois Griesel. Uh, hi Albert, in sales and marketing, what would you say is the best way to advertise, advertise in our time? Okay, Francois, thanks for your question. Best way to advertise in sales and marketing is digital marketing, okay? A pamphlet, uh, it, um, I work in marketing. My company I, I have is called Gazeroo. We do web development, social media, branding. We do hard printing <coughs> like business cards and pamphlets. And I can tell you printing 100 pamphlets can cost you a lot of money. And um, not all of those pamphlets reach the, reach the people you want them to reach. And um, some of them get lost. Where with the same amount of money, you can do a Facebook or Instagram marketing campaign, which can get you over 30,000 people. I mean, if I think 100 pamphlets, about 1,500 rand, you can get over 30 to 40,000 people viewing your ad for 1,500 bucks to 2,000 bucks on Facebook or Instagram. So I would say that's a way better way to go. Rather spend your money on digital marketing. What you can do on Facebook and Instagram ads is you can actually select your target market in terms of age, um, gender, uh, location, interest. I mean, you can target, if, if you're in real estate, you can target all the people whose job description is marked as a real estate agent. So that is possible. So you actually target the specific market and you can reach so much more people with the same amount of money. So 1,500 bucks in digital marketing can get you to over 30,000 people, whereas with pamphlets, you're going to reach about 100 people or so. So digital marketing is super key. The important thing about digital marketing, though, is you have to look good. Okay? Nobody likes, everybody likes the colorful presents underneath the Christmas tree. Nobody likes the present wrapped in a brown paper bag. Okay? They're not going to buy it. Um, so they're going to buy the colorful, nicely wrapped present. So make sure your branding is top notch. Make sure you know what you're doing in terms of your branding. Hire a graphic designer, hire an information designer, or outsource to a company like my company, Gazoo, that can handle that for you. And make sure your branding looks good and then push it on digital marketing. Another big, big advantage from digital marketing is the fact that someone can share. So if you have 600 friends on Facebook and you share your ad with those 600 friends, if one of them share that to their own wall or to their own page, their 600 friends on Facebook also sees that ad. And if one of them shares it again, their 600 friends also see that. 
So that's free marketing that can exponentially grow. So digital marketing is so important. And if you're building a Facebook or Instagram page, make sure um, you're consistent. Consistency is key. So post every week, post every day. Make sure you provide valuable content to your clients. Francia, how was that? Let me know if there's anything else, guys. There's another question. Uh, which social media platforms would you say is the way to go in terms of advertising your new business or brand? And which platforms should you, uh, would you say we should keep an eye on? Okay, okay. So, so platforms making a big uprising now is Instagram. It's actually taking Facebook by storm. Uh, Facebook actually bought Instagram when they saw that Instagram was going to make a big uh, in incline. So um, I'll say that I've, I've been talking to a lot of uh, students in schools as well. They're not on Facebook that much. Uh, I did a session with a school, uh, a, whole, you know, a whole full of school kids, and I said, well, who's not on Facebook? And then nobody, uh, all of them put their hands up, and I was so astounded. The older generation people are on Facebook, so if you're, that's your target market, Facebook is the one. Um, your younger people are on Instagram, if that's your target market, Instagram is the one. Uh, Twitter, um, feel like, I feel like Twitter is fading a bit out if I look at the market. Um, LinkedIn is good for professional business, so business to business, uh, you know, companies. So if, you, if that's your, if businesses is your target market, uh, do LinkedIn. And then another upcoming one is Pinterest. So that's a great one. Try and find a way to display your business on Pinterest. So keep a look on Pinterest and how you can use that as a sales funnel to direct um, clients to your website. And then all of these platforms are good methods to gather clients, but you should always have a core, you know, kind of place where they can get to and get more information and make and where you can make the sale. And that's your website. So have your website and have all of these social platforms surrounding it and, you know, funneling sales and people to your website. Super important. Francia, guys, thank you for tuning, tuning in this week on the live session. We'll have some more next week, Tuesday at 3. Remember, every Tuesday at 3, uh, tune in and we'll answer your questions in terms of business and finances. Um, I'm in the Cape for the next three weeks. So it would be from here, from the sea, which is awesome. Maybe next week we'll do one on the beach. And then I'll see you guys then. And uh, have a great uh, Christmas and New Year and um, uh, holiday season. And remember, if you don't know what present to get for your family and friends, get them How to Become a Millionaire 22. It's a great book, and I'm sure all of you will enjoy it. Cool, guys. Focus on your business from the outside perspective. Work on your business, not in your business, and work on that strategies for next year. Good luck.